pick a bunch of the red huckleberries there. I want to make some wine with, just crush them up with your hands. It was an interesting experiment making huckleberry wine in the bush. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. In this video, what I want to do is uh, pick a bunch of the red huckleberries there. It's really, really a good year for the red huckleberries. I want to make some wine, which I haven't done for a long time. I keep missing berry season all the time. The uh, red huckleberries, you get a rosé wine, which is nice. If you use the blue huckleberries or the blueberries, you're going to get a red wine or a dark wine. And I like that rosé color. I'm going to try to fill up this little uh, styrofoam cooler with berries, which should be enough for five gallons. That's my objective. And if you've got the red huckleberries, you might just want to get on making this wine. If you're a wine drinker, I, I realize a lot of people don't drink, but a little bit of wine is actually pretty good for you too. Is red wine healthy? And the answer is yes. Let's get some of these red huckleberries. a good berry season. The bears will be loving it. It's pretty slow picking each individual berry by hand. I'll show you a little thing that I use. Basically it's my hairbrush. It's fine on the bush. You'll see how it works. I'm going to show you. I picked all the hair out of it. Try to get all the dandruff out. But it's only me going to drink the wine probably but I'm going to boil the berries anyway. What's a hair or two? It would be different if you were eating a hamburger. You know, we've all had it happen at a restaurant and you find a hamburger that's got a hair in it. Well, who wants to eat that? show you how this, this little brush can really be five times, five times faster than picking each berry by hand. I'm going to put my cooler wherever I think it's in a good spot. Take the individual branches. And I just comb it. You can hear the berries just going in there. Hear that? That's all you got to do. Listen to that. Only missed two little berries that probably were too small to get hooked on the brush. It's beneficial for these huckleberry bushes to actually get the berries picked because once the berries are off, it doesn't have to spend all its energy trying to make or ripen the berries. Then it can focus on the root system, preparing for next year. It, it's just beneficial to pick them. And now you can see uh, my bucket's getting pretty full. And there's a few leaves, but that's not going to harm. I have seen people use a uh, similar rake idea that do damage the plants, like out of coffee cans and sharp metal objects. And basically they're scraping the bark, they're taking the buds for next year, they're damaging the bush. I have seen that. Yes, I'm going to have to winnow the leaves off it on a screen or this or that. Hopefully you learn the way to pick huckleberries a little quicker just with a soft bristle br bristled brush. Okay, so now I picked about four bushes and you can see that there's, you know, a few more leaves, a couple of twigs. Not an issue. Basically you want to comb from the underneath and you can kind of hold your thumb and watch how easy this is on this bush. A couple of big ones stuck. They come right out. Now look at clean as a bell. Looks like a little dog there in the clouds. You see his tail, his legs. Okay. Well, good morning. I've got to get some more berries today. I got some yesterday, but I still need quite a bit more. I want to do five gallons of the huckleberry wine. So I'm still picking berries for my huckleberry wine. I'll tell you the problem with using the brush was it worked great on certain bushes. But then other bushes, it just didn't work at all. Like if the berries were small, it wasn't hardly getting any of them off. And then I found uh, 
a real problem is these these berry bushes are almost finished there's a lot of rotten berries but you can't tell you look at the bush they look good so just combing them off into my pail or my cooler there almost overnight the berries were rotting because there's so many it's like 50 percent of these berries are rotting so now i'm just going back to hand picking i tied a pail which is a lot easier you don't have to carry the bucket through the bush and this is the way to go picking berries but i mean some of these berries are okay they're firm but then like what i'm finding is a lot of the berries are absolutely rotten the berry is just it's rotting it's no good this one's firm it's okay so right now it seems like it's 50 50 with the berries that are rotting and the berries that are still firm and okay they look good but until you touch them you can't tell that's why i went back to hand picking because as i go oh that one's throw it away it's rotting even though it looks good so one of the problems that i'm having right now is i can't pick enough berries in a day without them rotting to make five gallons so i'm going to do two gallons at a time and then just add the batches together at the end i need 18 pounds of huckleberries 18. that's a lot of huckleberry picking huckleberry fairy follow me process them today is what we have to do nice big berries though pretty impressed okay so i'm boiling up some water i gotta add some sugar to my water and then pour it on my berries i did that yesterday with the berries i had yesterday but i ran out of daylight and it wasn't good so i just did it i had about the same amount of berries about half a pail i don't have a scale okay so i'm just going and i'm a pretty good judge of weight when people say oh well here feel my fish what do you think it weighs i'm usually within half a pound i think half a pail is about four pounds i did half a pail yesterday i might need another pound of berries tomorrow to add to it but i want to have all my water and sugar in there i added a couple of candom tablets earlier today to this batch because it kills the wild yeast just the germs and everything that can spoil your wine so i did do that now i just have to get another batch in there and then i've got like two and a half gallons you have to disinfect all of the stuff you're using it's not so important uh, with your pot you're boiling water in obviously you got to try to be clean and I'm making this uh, wine in the bush here at my camp making it in the bush and I can keep adding berries and and everything and once I put it in the bigger container their carboy I can uh, just mix two batches together but I want to take a specific gravity once I have all my sugar in there and then that way you take a reading at the end and you can figure out the alcohol content and everything like that. So this will be half of five gallons once I add these, the rest of my water. Because I added the candom tablets, I gotta let the water cool down before I put it in the bucket. I uh, used quite a bit of the sugar yesterday. This is almost enough for a complete five gallon batch. It's uh, nine pounds and I need about 10 pounds. 10 pounds is the recipe, 18 pounds of huckleberries and 10 pounds of sugar so i need a bit more sugar for half my batch so i'm just guessing again so that's definitely half the sugar i need like for the five gallons is what i'm saying i'm doing a half batch so people are going to think that using a stick is going to contaminate it but it's going to be absolute boiling water and that's what i poured on the berries to stop them from rotting yesterday and like I say now the candom tablets are in there just to basically kill the wild yeast that's on the berries but now I really need to get it fermenting by tomorrow and then you have to leave it 24 hours with the Campton tablets before you add your yeast or your yeast is not going to work because it'll kill that yeast as well but after 24 hours it's lost it's uh effect and then you add your yeast you know it's a satisfying thing to go out pick berries 
sit around the camp like this and do a project like this. It's really enjoyable. It really is, folks. Okay, so I disinfected this. I'm just going to take my berry bag out of here to add my new berries. It's already got a nice looking color to it. But not enough berries, I know that. Of course these hornets, look at they want to get in my wine. Is with the berries, is just take a couple handfuls at a time, squish them up as you put them in. Just crush them up with your hands and drop them in, put them back in there. I got my berries in the bucket. I'm waiting for the water to cool down that I boiled and put the sugar in. So the cleaning agent that you use to clean all your equipment is sodium meta basulfate. If I pronounced it right, I'm not sure. You're saying it wrong. It's leviosa, not leviosa. But anyway, then I'll take a specific gravity when I add the other water with the sugar and then I'll uh, be able to take a reading at the end, know exactly the percentage of alcohol. I just hope it turns out because I am doing it here in the bush. Obviously, I'm more susceptible to bacterias and this and that, but the candom tablets should do their job as far as the, the mush goes. You know, I'm pretty sure I can guess close enough for the, you know, the yeast nutrients and all those ingredients, which I'll show you in the morning what we're going to put in it when we add our yeast. So that's it for tonight. Tomorrow I'll add another pound of berries to this and then we'll do hopefully another batch. I think I'm doing pretty good and as long as we don't have bacteria that wrecked it or rotten berries that tainted it. Okay, so I let my um, final batch of water and sugar cool overnight. It's good to go. I gotta get this batch going or it's gonna spoil. So what I need is I have to add one tablespoon of yeast nutrient. I have to add one tablespoon of acid blend. Then I've got to use a quarter of a teaspoon of the wine tannin. And then I need a third of a teaspoon of the pectin enzyme. So that's what I'm adding to this. It doesn't matter what order I do this in. But I'm pretty good guess at how much a tablespoon or a teaspoon is. Now one tablespoon. I'm thinking that's about a tablespoon. So get that in there. And my acid blend, same thing, tablespoon. Same idea. Pectin enzyme, third of a teaspoon. It's approximately right. Might be a bit more. I don't think it matters. Wine tannin. Now this I, I don't need a lot of. About third of a teaspoon. Okay. We'll mix that all up. Well, this is Oven's Rocky Mountain Bushcraft, so we're just using an alder branch to mix it with. We don't have those fancy implements that everybody uses, like measuring cups and scales. And, <laughs> and then last but not least, I'll add my pack of yeast. So that's ready to go in there. I think I'll just add my pack of yeast now too. Temperature is actually pretty good right now for doing this, I think. It's about 70. You want 70 to 72, but it does cool down at night, so we'll see what happens there. And I'd like to add another pound of berries to the mix because I think I'm a little shy on berries. I just hope that this effort is worth it. Get that in there. And that's it for now. Try to keep this warm. It's going to cool down. I think this will be good wine. 
So we're kind of doing this wine a little unconventionally. For one thing, we're in the bush. I'm not using precise measurements. Like I say, this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. We do not do things the way people normally do them. <laughs> okay. But if this wine does turn out and doesn't turn to vinegar, I guarantee you it's going to be better than prison wine. Now, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I doubt you'd ever get huckleberry wine in prison. Me and some of the guys were thinking about going down to the laundry room, drinking some toilet wine and beating up some of the new guys. Or well, we could just stay in and drink toilet wine here. I'm hoping for the best for sure. It was a lot of work to pick the berries, everything else. It's not just picking them, it's the effort, babysitting everything, letting it cool, canned them tablets, then wait 24 hours and hopefully no bacteria got in it, you know, in the waiting period of the last uh, 24 hours. So the yeast should take off within about 12 hours and in about five days, then I'm going to siphon it off, take the pulp bag out and get it in a, a container and put an airlock on it and then if that all goes good, then I feel better about uh, the end product actually turning out. Should be good. Well, I just thought I would uh, show you something interesting like these. These huckleberries this year are just huge. And they're just loaded. I know you all are interested when I find something interesting to see something interesting. There's this bush here, and I've never seen a huckleberry bush like this. It's loaded too. And the weird thing, I mean, sometimes you see how dark red these huckleberries are. And sometimes there's the odd pink one, and I've seen bushes that basically have a dark pink berry to them. But this bush over here, I've never seen it. It's like an albino huckleberry bush. It's got white berries, it's got pink berries and red berries all on the same bush some kind of a hybrid huckleberry bush here it's interesting okay look at this bottom middle you see a red berry there's some pink berries and white the two on the top are absolutely white there, there's no pink or red or nothing it's the strangest thing i've ever seen look at that isn't that interesting Got the dark red, the pinkish, and white. I've never, ever seen the likes of this. Well, I gotta taste all three of these colors and see if there's a difference. Got the red. Taste the way they're supposed to. The pink. Can't tell the difference in the white. There's no difference between any of the colors. Leave a comment below if you've ever seen red huckleberries with red, pink, and white berries all in the same bush. I mean, that's, that bush is a freak of nature or something. I'm gonna take all three colors from the bush. Take the seeds out of all the colors on that bush. I mean, it's a genetic oddity, I think. I'm gonna try to preserve the genetics of this strange huckleberry bush and see in the spring. I mean, this will be in a future video in the spring. We're gonna see if we can germinate some seeds from that tree and maybe get them started in little pots, bring them back out and plant them somewhere, hopefully. I can preserve the genetics of that bush. What do you think of that? Leave a comment. I think it's a great idea. Well, I'm just gonna do a specific gravity test so that I can write the numbers down and then I'll know the percentage of alcohol at the end. Okay. 
way. So, kind of hard to tell, but it looks like 1.50. Okay, I'll write that down, and then when it finishes uh, fermenting, we do another test, and then there's uh, an equation to figure it out. So, I don't need to put that little bit back in. So, 1.50. It's important if you want to keep track. I mean, it's not necessary, but it's always interesting. It's part of the fun of, of making the wine is to see what the end result is going to be. There is a chart I think I'm going to check here that kind of gives you an estimate, but the only way to truly figure it out is when it's finished fermenting and before you're going to bottle it, you do another test, you take another reading and minus that reading off the first reading and it'll tell you exactly. So it's interesting, it's a fun hobby. I'm really glad I got out here getting these berries and doing this. Um, I haven't made wine for years. I'm not a wine drinker, like I said, but hopefully it turns out and other people that like wine at least can enjoy it. It's been a couple of days and um, you can see the bubbles up along this edge. You can see it's all frothy. And I don't know if you can see, but I can see bubbles coming up through. And I can smell it. I can just smell the fermentation taking place. It's working great. Well, I am out here in the bush. The starter will not engage on my truck. I have been trying to get this starter to engage for a while now. So here's one of those situations where I'm stranded. Because I, I think what's wrong is there's probably teeth that are missing on the flywheel. So it won't engage. It's just going forward and not grabbing anything. I'm going to take the winch and try to pull it in first gear and see if we can get it to a different position where the starter can grab. That's what I'm hoping for or else I got to hike out of here and get a tow truck. There's not much to tow to here either. There's a couple of stumps over there and I hope I have enough cable to get to one and hopefully this idea works just to get it to town. Funny thing is when they I had to have the transmission rebuilt so they took the transmission out, rebuilt it they should have noticed, you'd think, if there was missing teeth on the uh, flywheel. Well, I better put it in first gear. It's not going to pull in park. Well, it doesn't even seem to be rotating the motor. Well, I might be out of luck. I might be hiking out of here. Well, that's not working. If it was a standard, it would work. Well, okay, I got the starter off. Sure enough, that is the problem. There's missing teeth for about four inches. I don't know why when they did the tranny they wouldn't have seen these missing teeth on the flywheel. But it had to just stop where there was no teeth to grab to start the motor. But I got to get it in, obviously, to the shop and get the flywheel changed now. So now the tranny has to come right out again. I've been in a lot of situations like this in the bush before and I usually can figure out ways to get a vehicle to start again. In this case, I gotta push the flywheel far enough that it's got teeth it can grab. Crazy man. So one more thing I didn't mention. Last week, I was in a parking lot in town. This time, the starter actually went. So I just replaced this starter myself a week ago. And now we got a problem with this flywheel. Man, it gets frustrating when you're, you're always just trying to get out and do adventures and your vehicle's breaking down constantly. It's just on and on it goes. As long as I move that flywheel far enough that it'll grab the teeth long enough to start the truck, I'll be able to pack up and get it to a shop. Right on. See, I'm optimistic, but I know I can fix this. Okay, I'm ready to try this. Okay, let's try. One, 
two, three. Ooh, she hit that. She hit that dead spot again, but it, it was probably going fast enough to get through it and grab the rest of the teeth. All right, we did it. So I am here at a motel because the truck's in the repair shop. You remember how I had to get it out of the bush by moving the starter and all that. But it's time to siphon my wine. It's bubbling nice. I have no choice. It's time to get it into these jugs. I would have rather done it in the bush, but I'm kind of stuck. Stranded is what I am. So we just siphon this off. It was an interesting experiment making huckleberry wine in the bush. It's fermenting just fine. There goes the lid. The airlock on. There we go. You lose a little bit when you're siphoning. That's looking good. I like the color. I think I only have two and a half gallons in here. Maybe I got three gallons, we'll see. Push them in good. And there you go. You can see the bubbles bursting at the top. And hopefully see them coming up the sides. Fermenting nicely. Another one over here. Looking good. You can see the airlocks working. You'll see it going up and down, bubbling, dropping. That's what you want to see. So, I want to thank you all for watching the wine video. I want to thank all you subscribers in particular, but all you viewers too. Uh, if you have these red huckleberries in your area, now's the time to try to make this wine. I think it's going to turn out really well. The only unfortunate thing is we have to wait a few months to do a taste test. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. I have lots of adventures coming up. So we'll see you on the next one. The seals are fishing in the river. <laughs>